Good evening. Tonight we watched what's probably my new favorite boxing movie, and I don't know many boxing movies, but if I did, I'm sure that this one would be... Okay. This one would still be it, but I'll get to that. Um, we watched a couple other movies also. Um, the 1960 Roger Corman. Uh, Roger Corman. I remember Frank Oz. Roger Corman version of uh, The Little Shop of Horrors, which uh, was the uh, first, the first movie credit of one Jack Nicholson. He plays, um, those familiar with the musical movie, the uh, Bill Murray uh, role, the guy who wants to uh, feel the pain of attending the dentist. And the scene goes uh, differently, uh, a little differently than, uh, well, yeah, a lot of things are different uh, and arguably weirder in this version of the movie. It is, I think, in the public domain because we watched it for free on YouTube. Uh, and it's uh, quite interesting. Um, we also watched a movie called Stray, and uh, it uh, it seemed like it might be a uh, kind of a monster type, not monster, but like uh, haunted supernatural. And there's a supernatural showdown. Uh, it kind of went over my head. The fantasy did, but the uh, or one of the main characters is Karen Fukuhara, who uh, might be familiar to some from Amazon's The Boys. And so that was, uh, I'll take another viewing to, to get it better, but uh, I think it was um, definitely okay to be watching that uh, in the Halloween. Um, there was something about, or the at the end of the uh, credits, um, when, when, I, uh, when we watch things on the, the Apple TV, then I, I'm always, because now they hide extra scenes, so I always try to see through the credits, but I don't always want to hold on to the, like, actually let the credits go. Uh, so I press the pause button, and then I use the touchpad here to zoom through the credits, and it shows what the credits are going to be, so if, if there's anything to see, then I know. Uh, but then I zoom to the end, and at the end it said uh, the... the um, company that made the movie or something was called Save the Witches LLC. So I think it had something to do with witches. Um, but anyway, Stray, The Little Shop of Horrors, and uh, The uh, Treehouse of Horror 19, uh, the, the Simpsons episode. Notable sketches include... They're not as notable in the later seasons. Um, there was... Uh, oh, there was a Transformers one. And the opening featured Homer uh, tr tr trying to choose between voting for McCain and Obama. So it was the 2008 episode. And um, that's all that I remember. Uh, oh, um, the dead celebrities one. Homer gets hired to kill celebrities so that their images can be used in advertising. A Mad Men, um, sort of a Mad Men takeoff. Anyway, Abbott and Costello... Meet the Invisible Man, um, the last of the Invisible Man movies, and uh, this, I think, one of the few uh, DVD cases that sets with the, all these DVDs in it, where the, when I watched these movies, I watched them out of this set. The Invisible Man doesn't cross over except with Abbott and Costello, and that's his own movie. Um, so... All the Invisible Man's appearances are in here. I watched each and every one of these discs. Um, I was, as I believe I noted, uh, disappointed to know at the end of Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein that it was Vincent Price's voice introducing himself as the Invisible Man to Abbott and Costello, but then I knew that he wasn't actually in Abbott and Costello Meet the Invisible Man. But uh, it being, let's see who it was... It was uh, Arthur Franz did not bother me that it, uh, that it wasn't Vincent Price because the, uh, that, I mean, Vincent Price couldn't have done this story. Uh, it's, it's about a boxer who, I guess, refuses to take a dive so that mobsters can win the, uh, the betting, the gambling, 
and so he gets in trouble with the mob and they frame him for a murder and so he goes invisible to do this to do uh and and hires uh private detectives abbott and costello uh with they've got different voices um but they're still bud and lou i think uh and i'm starting to remember which one is which but so he hires private detectives to help him figure out what actually happened and um and of course hijinks ensue because it's abbott and costello so it's comedy uh, and it, it all leads up to a boxing match where Lou, uh, Lou Costello, uh, as Louis the Looper, um, a pretending to be boxer, is in the ring with a boxer named Rocky. Um, and this was like 30 years before, or maybe 20, I don't know, between 20 and 30 years before the movie Rocky. But possibly the guy was named Rocky based on the real boxer named Rocky, who Stallone's character was named after. I don't know boxing movies, um, but I know that if I, uh, if I were going to, of all the boxing movies I've seen, which is an unreasonable amount, there are a lot of them, Rocky is one of the ones that I would watch on repeat, over and over again, and also Creed 2. Creed 1, I liked. Creed 2, I loved. Um, but anyway, and this I loved too. Um, so Lou ends up in the ring uh, with against Rocky, and then the invisible boxer is there with him to make sure he doesn't get killed, uh, and to also make sure that the fight goes the way that he needs it to go in order to find out the uh, and solve the mystery. Um, also in this movie, no, uh, Abbott and Costello of note, not many other people of note except William Frawley, and I think this is the first time I've actually looked up the guy's name. Um, he uh, is best known as Fred Mertz from I Love Lucy, but he is also the political advisor of the judge in the original Miracle on 34th Street. He's the one who says, uh, you, can, you can send Santa Claus to jail, but uh, then nobody's going to vote for you. Um, or, uh, and then later on, the classic line, I don't care what you do with old whisker puss out there, but uh, if you go out there and rule there's no Santa Claus, uh, you're not going to win any more elections ever. So, very funny guy, um, and always a, a joy to see him in movies. Uh, or on TV. I haven't seen an episode of I Love Lucy in a long time, but uh, nice to, every so often, to, to find him, to pick him up places. He's my favorite, one of my favorites. Oh, it's that, it's him. It's Mertz. Um, so let's see. Uh, more fun special effects. They have the invisible ma the invisible man in this movie. Tommy Nelson is the name this time. So again, not a Griffin. I, there's a, the people who supply the invisible juice or whatever. Are they Griffins? I don't know. There's a Doctor Doctor Philip Gray. So there are Grays, not Griffins. I don't know if they're at all related. It's very messy. Um, uh, so, no Griffins. Tommy Nelson is the Invisible Man uh, in this one, and they have him uh, shuffle and deal cards and move chips. They're playing poker, they're gambling. Um, with it. He's gambling with Abbott and Costello, and uh, it's, a, it's a very funny scene. They do a kind of one of those tricks where um, he's invisible, but he's wearing a robe, and they throw a sheet over him, and then under the sheet he disrobes and becomes naked and therefore completely invisible. So when the sheet is pulled, he disappears. And that's a, kind of a classic, it's, it's a take on a classic um, magician's stage trick. Um, and they do some of the thing where he's visible in fog. Uh, it's it's uh, always, and it's, it's fun to see sometimes whether it's, whether it's foggy or not, when he's moving or when he's doing something, when it's actually him there, sometimes in one in one uh, scene it was clearly a mannequin uh, with kind of puppet arms, but uh, whenever he's physically there, it's fun to sometimes see the halo or the shadow of the invisible, like still see through, but you can tell the outline of a person is there. Um, these have been a lot of fun, even though completely disjointed and uh, and uh, hard to track the Griffins and and whoever, um, but definitely um, definitely a, a fun series. So 
Uh, that being the last, it can now go back in the box. It can disappear. Tomorrow is... I think I know what it is. Okay, yes. Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, one of the... Uh, probably the movie from the VHS days that I was surprised to love most. Um, so that is very exciting. That I'm going to get to see that again. And... Uh, and then there's one more Abbott and Costello. I don't know exactly what the schedule is, but there's two more creatures and one more Abbott and Costello, and it's with the mummy. So maybe this time uh, it will make sense, the mummy movie. But for now, have a lovely midnight.